Hello. Today in this webinar, we will be highlighting constraints and routing for a successful DDR3, DDR4 design using PADS Professional. PADS Professional is a comprehensive design suite for the independent hardware engineer, utilizing the industry-leading expedition technology that is powerful enough to handle the most complex and demanding designs. In many cases, it is becoming rare for an engineer to be focused on just design entry or analysis and verification, or even dedicated solely to the PCB design. So PADS Professional includes simulation and analysis functionality, as well as schematic capture and routing. PADS Professional embodies the correct by construction methodology of expedition and brings such advanced layout concepts as hierarchical planning and placement, sketch router, and advanced constraint-driven routing into the PADS world. We all remember how data was passed from the engineer and the layout design to the layout designer in the past. In PADS Professional, collaborative environment, the planning process is streamlined. We can send the engineer's intent and its associated properties directly through to the layout designer. The lines between the groups you see here are a significant improvement over the traditional circuit flow chart as they show the weight of the connections between the groups graphically. The Component Explorer is the interface that drives all placement and planning within PADS Professional. Its main features are a navigator view allowing the creation and management of hierarchical groups, as well as showing the status of each group within layout. A list view displaying all components within the selected group, including extensive property filtering. And lastly, support for component and group marking, which is used for netline visibility control. Connectivity visualization can be managed in many ways. The PADS Professional Routing Environment with the Net Explorer allows you to set your netline views according to your specific preferences. Display netlines and groups by net class, constraint class, etc., or define your own custom groups. Marking options may be used for both groups and individual nets. We will cover this in more detail during the demonstration. A comprehensive constraint definition and verification environment supports physical and electrical constraints. This is especially important for DDR3, DDR4 designs. Constraint reuse with the definition of templates accelerates the overall design process. Hierarchical constraint entry also speeds input of complex rules on multiple objects, including rules to manage high-speed signal timing, prevent interference and crosstalk, and to also meet manufacturing clearance requirements. To successfully read or write even a single bit DDR memory, a complex sequence of electrical handshaking must take place between the controller and memory chips. This signaling must occur within a precise set of voltage and timing requirements. System designers must ensure that each voltage threshold and timing relationship conforms to the demands of the transmitter, receiver, and target standard for which the design is intended. The result, even the simplest configuration, can easily exceed 100 individual design rules to maintain. Let's review a few of the constraints needed for DDR3 from the JEDEC spec. Much like any synchronous data transfer, the quality of the clock ultimately determines the throughput capability for a DDR interface. To achieve the gigabit data rates currently mainstream in the memory market, Great care must be used to maintain fidelity both on the voltage and time axis. Differential signaling with careful consideration for impedance and delay is capable of producing a very reliable reference pulse with minimal noise and or jitter. To facilitate implementation, impedance delay requirements are frequently expressed as limits to the physical properties, as you can see here, which govern them like length, width, and height. Like the clocks, address and control signals must deliver unambiguous voltage at precise time intervals to each receiving IC. Adding to the complexity for this signal group is the realization that these nets frequently have multiple receivers, delay not included on the printed circuit board, and timing relationships with other signals. Additionally, the extended length required to attach multiple receivers leaves the signal more exposed to interference from nearby signals i.e. crosstalk. To combat this, constraints between objects allow for both match group and relative delays, as well as minimum spacing between objects and net elements. 
For critical data paths, timing references must include all entries which exist between the transmitter and receiver. Flexibility in the delay calculation and tracking within the constraint manager enables flight time calculations that account for package delays as well as skew and jitter to complete the verification on the time axis. The net class capability bridges the electrical world of impedance with the physical dimensions responsible for producing it. Trace geometry and via selection can be grouped such that the impedance remains consistent from layer to layer, enabling the designer to route complex topologies without impedance mismatches and the voltage noise associated with them. Accepting this attention to impedance addresses voltage concerns, we can achieve similar control over delay issues with restrictions on net length. The intricate timing relationships associated with the DDR data exchange can be synchronized using trace length matching to ensure proper signal handshaking. In fact, the concept of source synchronous data transfer created for DDR utilizes a local clock called the strobe within each byte lane to facilitate the transfer. Constraint classes provide a mechanism to monitor a nearly endless number of complex timing relationships. Groups can be matched with and without offsets and tolerances and may include minimum maximum limits or be purely relative. While we've seen constraints used to influence the behavior of a net, they can also be used to isolate a net from the unwanted influences of its neighbors. Much like delay versus length, isolation thresholds can be expressed in the electrical term crosstalk or physically as parallelism. In either case, the extent of separation can be general, restricting all neighbors, or focused on a specific aggressor net or net class. Checks can also be multi-level, reporting errors for parallelism greater than one inch at four mils or two inches at eight mils as shown here. To produce a functioning DDR subsystem, compliance with the impedance delay and isolation requirements can be more administratively challenging than technological. To address this, the constraint manager unifies these, combining them with the rules for manufacturing and tests to achieve a single view for review and control. Actuals can be extracted from the design database and compared against the rules for design verification, and we'll show that in the demonstration as well. Shown here is, is some of the functionality that we'll be demonstrating. Uh, the sketch route, which makes it very fast to be able to, to, uh, to, to uh, create traces and high-speed tuning options. So this complements the constraint manager with a robust routing environment in Pads Professional with functions such as sketch routing, allowing multiple traces to be routed together along a defined path, and high-speed tuning options to facilitate the timing constraints defined in the constraint manager. Here we have a DDR3 design with two byte lanes loaded into Pads Professional. The address, control, clock, and the second byte lane have already been routed. You can see that when the Net Explorer window is opened, we can select nets by net class, constraint class, type, or any custom defined planning group. Opening the display control, we turn off the display of layer 8. Then selecting and marking byte lane 0, with the display control set to only display marked connection lines, it is now very easy to only work with the nets of interest. You can see that the route lines cross over each other. A few pin swaps could improve the routability of these nets, and this would be an example where the FPGA design option for PADS Professional might be able to help. But for now, we will work with the nets as they are. I enable layer 5 and draw a path for the sketch router. I select sketch route and all except two of the nets are quickly routed. Sketch route allows me to easily undo the routes and try another sketch path to see if it is any better. In this case, there are still two unrouted nets, so in the interest of time, I will enable layer 10 and quickly draw a sketch and route those nets on a different layer.
Opening up the constraint manager, you can see that the byte lane is set to match their links by restricting the length to between 1000 and 1100 mil. I could also have easily set them to be just matched length. I go to the data menu and load the actuals from the design. You can see that one of the nets is routed to the defined length, but the others are all reported as red because they are too short. I then choose to order the nets by length. I can automatically cross probe from here back into the design, but in this case I just identify the two shortest nets as DQ5 and DM0 and go back into the design to do some tuning of these nets. You can see how easy it is for me to move the traces to make more room for tuning. One of the advantages of Paz Professional is the advanced routing and glossing environment. I then select DQ5 and use the right mouse button to manually add a tuning accordion. By selecting the corners or edges of this accordion object, I can quickly add length to the trace until the length monitor changes to green, indicating that the target length has been reached. Notice how push and shove has moved other traces if needed. Now I move on to the DM0 net and repeat the tuning procedure. There is an advanced high-speed routing option that automates the tuning procedure for single or multiple nets at once for designs that have many constrained high-speed nets. I go into Setup License Modules to enable this option. Let's go back to the Constraint Manager. I am working with a single screen, but with two screens it would be easier to have both the routing screen and Constraint Manager displayed at the same time. Again, loading in the actuals, you can see that with the tuning and moving of traces, there are now four nets within range. Note that sometimes both the electrical net and the physical net, which are the same in this case, are displayed in two rows. Back in Pads Pro, I select one of the shorter nets and use the automatic tuning function. You can see that the accordion was added to match to the correct length. I then select all of the nets and automatically tune them as a group. In the constraint manager, we load the actuals and see that all but one net are now matched to the constraint. I use cross probe to select that net and go back into the design to tune it. I repeat the process, opening up some space for the tuning and adding the accordion object. The flexible manual tune capability allows you to add the tuning the way you want it to be. Back in the Constraint Manager and we verify that all nets are tuned to the defined constraints.
At this point, I would select all the nets in the bite lane and fix them so that they cannot be modified. This concludes a quick demonstration of routing high-speed nets in Pads Professional. We do have a couple questions here. Does the sketch router behave to the spacing rules defined in the constraint manager? Yes, it does. In fact, that's one of the ways of controlling the way that the sketch router uh, routes. When I did the first demonstration, I was using what's called packed mode. And in the packed mode, it was actually spacing them based on whatever the spacing rule, uh, trace to trace spacing rule was. When I did the ones for the tuning, I did it in an un unpacked mode so that the traces were more spared out. But yes, it does obey them. Can I use the delay tuning capability on differential pairs? Yes, it turns out I didn't show that in the demonstration, but uh, the differential pairs have the same ability. If I opened up one of those tuning, tuning things on there, I would get the same kind of box, but both traces would be affected by it. If I have pin delays supplied by my vendor, can I include them in my delay calculations? Yes. In fact, uh, the slide that I was showing you uh, for, the, uh, for the definition of the rules was defining the pin delays over with on A on the left-hand side and then the trace delays as well. And so you can actually do equations in uh, Pads Professional or you can actually load a table of those delays and include them in any of the calculations. Can you make it so the sketch route tool will automatically tune the net links? Or will you always need to go back after completing the sketch to manually adjust the connection? Uh, that's an interesting question. And that is one of the differences between Pads Professional and the full expedition tool. Pads Professional includes the sketch router. And you can see that the multi-trace option includes the ability to tune multiple traces. But actual auto routing capabilities is not present in the sketch router. This is sort of what I call interactive auto routing capabilities. So if you wanted to do both of those in the same process, it would be uh, something you would do in expedition rather than pad professional. Next question. If two net travels through a series resistor, does the tuning meter include add trace to the other side of the resistor on the short side? Yes, it does. I didn't show it, but in the constraint manager, I, I can look at the concept of an electrical net. So when I'm setting my rules, okay, an electrical net would be the combination of both nets on either side of a series resistor. And the rules can be based on the electrical net length that we're going in. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we've had some real good questions. Thank you all for joining us.